Okay, so we'll start with the back of the engine here. Um, really, the only gasket situation is, is going to be uh, exhaust related. So I know I'm going to need, um, and, and I know you know the ABF head's different, but the studs and the gaskets are all the same. Uh, same goes for the manifold to the downpipe. That's still the same double outlet US uh, uh, size, as far as I know. Um, so. I'm gonna get new, I, and I know the studs look fine, and they probably are fine, but it's a while you're in there thing. I know you're probably gonna say I go through this list, and oh my god, he doesn't need to buy that, it's fine. But I, I'm getting it, and at worst case, I'll have spares. So uh, I'm gonna do new studs, copper caps, and uh, exhaust gaskets, so. Uh, while we're looking at the head, I already got a chain. Um, I know there was a, a little bit of a debate on whether or not these sprockets are questionable. Um, I'll call it good. Obviously, it worked for everybody else, and I, you know we've never been able to see an instance where they failed. But uh, we have seen instances where the chain gets really loose, and you know even a, a brand new OEM chain I think was like 15 bucks. So um, peace of mind on that. I already have a new chain. Um, I am probably even though this valve cover gasket and both internal and external looks fine. Get another one of those, uh, why not? And I'm definitely doing a cam seal because this cam seal was leaking. So um, I've got a cam seal here and on the other side there's a distributor O-ring. I think I already have one, I know I need more. It's the same 16 valve distributor O-ring, it's that green one. Um, and that's a pretty common uh, uh, wear item as well. So um, I think there's also another gasket for the um, coolant the, the coolant flange on the well we'll work our way around at the front but there's a there's a coolant flange on the driver's side of the head that needs to be replaced as well so we'll get all those okay now we'll work our way over to the Uh, passenger side of the engine and uh, right off the bat you could tell the uh, oil pump seal was definitely leaking and the front main seal wasn't really in great shape. Um, I'm gonna, I, you should always do front and rear main seals on pretty much every, if you ever pull a transmission and you don't do a rear main seal, I don't care if it's almost dry or not. Uh, it's another peace of mind thing it's a pain in the ass to pull a transmission, and if you go in and you rush through a clutch and you don't do a rear main, and 10,000 miles later it starts leaking, you're probably gonna be kicking yourself. I, I don't know, I can still do a front wheel drive transmission pretty quickly, and I don't think I would enjoy uh, making that mistake. So, just my two cents on that. So, bunch more seals. Okay, so uh, working our way around to the front, we, uh, I've got to do a water pump. They're so freaking cheap. A lot of them come with the water pump already made into the housing, already thermostat and whatnot included. So, I mean, that goes without saying. Um, that's another thing that's like, water pumps pump water. I don't understand why people replace them as often as they do. Um, if, if the bearing's fine, there's, in a, at least in a, a 16 valve like this, the impellers are, are, you know, don't fall apart immediately. As long as it's pumping water and your temp's fine, you're, you're fine. So, but anyway, I do need a new one. I think on my other 16 valve that I've run for tens of thousands of miles, I've had to do one once, I think, when I put it in. And it's been fine. So, uh, water pump, all the associated goings on there. Um, crank breather seal. Sort of moot. Again, I could probably get away with reusing what I have because it was actually fairly clean. I'm gonna get it. I don't care. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there's two seals on that. One's an O-ring, and one's an actual seal. <coughs> the next seal is the uh, oil pump output flange. We looked at that before. Again, the one I have is halfway decent, but. Do need a new one. That's one obviously you don't want to screw around with because that's really high pressure out of these two, you know, in and out of these two little orifices. You're moving all of the oil through that, so um, that's a good thing to do. 
So uh, that's most of the seals on the front. The other things though that need to be done on the front, if you look at these two bosses right here, there's actually two knock sensors on this motor. There's a short one that has a brown plug on it and there's a longer one that has a black plug on it. <coughs> uh, those two knock sensors are going to need to be replaced as well. Um, not because I just like going out and spending a ton of money on knock sensors, but if you look at the cables, I'll actually, here, I'll show you one for the crank position sensor that I've already have two of because I want to have replacements. And if you can see that, uh, this, this insulation just, just gets dis destroyed. So um, you're going to have a lot of problems with that. Um, I know my friend, uh, Matt. Matt Bouchore, which is one of my one of two Volkswagen friends I know that the rally and have run this ABF motor in the rally car, um, he had a, just a ton of trouble uh, intermittent uh, uh, starting issues because his crank position sensor would sometimes work and sometimes not. I mean, he would stall a car at a spectator point and just crank and crank and crank and it would never restart. Um, as far as I can tell, uh, as far as sensors go, the crank position sensor on this motor is the only thing, the only sensor that would ever generate a, a not start, a no start condition uh, for this engine. So um, it's it's one of those items that I bought, uh, I bought two of them to start with. I may buy another one, I don't know. It's one of those things that I want to carry in the car. I know it's easy to change. And again, it's one of the, it's a little finicky sensor that I've heard a lot of people have trouble with. It's another one of those things up there on the level with fuel pumps. You don't want to screw around with fuel pumps in a fuel injection car. They, you know, you just get weird failures and no start conditions. So um, that's a big, big item right there. The two knock sensors and the crank position sensor. Um, so uh, uh, the last little piece of it here, there's, there's two more big items. We've got the two, um, sets of seals for the intake manifold. I've already purchased um, a phenolic gasket, uh, a phenolic spacer for this to keep uh, the intake manifold from heat soaking. I'll probably do a little bit more to try and keep heat out of the intake manifold since it sits right on top of the engine and it's kind of near the exhaust a little bit. Um, so there are two seals there. Uh, there's a coolant output flange as well. Um, that's a fairly common one. That's common for all 16 valves. And the, the last piece is uh, I already purchased timing belts and what have you, but I need to get a timing belt tensioner as well. So um, that's gonna be pretty much all the items that I wanna make sure I replace before I put the motor in the car. All the other little uh, tidbits, like maybe um, maybe I'll throw injector seals or something in there like that, or maybe I'll, you know, there's a throttle body gasket and stuff. Yes, that all needs to be done. Um, I can do that with the motor in the car. I'm not not super concerned about it. I also, I have already purchased the standard four cylinder Volkswagen windage tray uh, that clears everything properly. And I am, if you have a keen eye and have seen my photos, I am converting back to a steel oil pan. Um, this ABF pan is aluminum or magnesium or something that even though I'm gonna have a really robust skid plate and I'll have foam in between the skid plate and the oil pan, I just don't ever wanna be in a situation where I have an oil pan failure. I've had that happen in my BMW uh, just way too many times, more times than I'm willing to admit. It's not a failure you wanna have on stage. Uh, you don't wanna have any failures on stage, but you also, you never wanna have that thought in your mind when you're going over a crest or you're going over the jump at, at, on uh, uh, Ollie's and you think, Mm, do I want to go 100% or do I want to go 85% because I'm worried about an oil pan? Um, I don't want to have crappy pictures going over jumps. So I'm going to go over jumps and whatever happens, happens. And um, we'll plan for that. We'll, we won't plan for, uh, uh, you know, slightly less damage. Uh, I know I'm going to try and hair the car out as much as possible. So um, I'd rather dent a pan than crack a slightly lighter pan. It's not going to give me any time. So. Um, I think that'll about do it for this episode of Project Synchro. Um, I know it's just kind of brushing around. It doesn't look like I've got a lot done, but uh, if you guys have, have rebuilt a motor or, or cleaned something up, um, it's really just a lot of time and elbow grease with wire brush and, uh, uh, you know, getting things to the, uh, 
uh, to your liking. It's never gonna look perfect, and I know uh, next to the car, it's, ne it's never gonna look as good as everything else, but right now, I'm just buying myself a few events um, on this motor. I don't wanna do a full rebuild because I don't need to. Um, I don't wanna dump more money on it than I have to, so I'm just getting it um, to a point where I can run one or two events before I need to tear everything down again. So um, that's why things are kind of going a little bit differently than they usually do. I'm not reinventing the wheel like I usually am. Yes, it's a little bit more boring, um, you know, but there is a, a method to my not so madness uh, this go around. So um, next time we come back, uh, hopefully this will be pretty much ready to paint and uh, uh, throw all of the uh, uh, menagerie of items I've just listed off onto the motor and we can start putting things together instead of taking things apart and uh, then I'll be feeling a little bit better about this whole situation. So see you guys next time. Thanks again for watching. Uh, be sure to uh, share this video. Uh, share all the stuff you see on Project Synchro. I know I try to post a lot of photos and uh, it's really awesome when I see somebody share uh, uh, one of these photos in another Volkswagen group or somewhere else and uh, I don't know it's just warms the cockles of my heart to see uh, uh, people enjoying that stuff. Uh, uh, I realize sometimes the videos are a little bit long, um, but you know, it's uh, much appreciated. It's, there's a lot of work that goes into this. We can't just churn out a two minute video and, and uh, you know, have it encompass everything. That's just not really what I'm doing here. It wouldn't really do it justice. There's a lot of detail that goes into the stupid little minutia that happens on the car. And uh, I appreciate the uh, folks who enjoy watching that. So. Thanks again, guys. See you next time.